Okay, can I look at uh, 6.3? Notice that this is a uh, American standard roll beam and we got these kind of uh, way to identify S310 cross 52. And then we got plates top and bottom. Obviously depth 16 millimeters. 200 millimeters wide. And <coughs> we're applying these four bolts <coughs> every 120 millimeters. We at this time we've been told that there's a permissible amount of stress that can be applied in each bolt. So this is quite similar to the previous problem with the now. So where we started off with um, the, the uh, now applied a certain every distance. So we start off with the shear flow equation. And therefore, we're doing the same sort of thing in the sense that uh, we're now applying four bolts every um, 120. So that will give us the force <coughs> that's being applied in each bolt, well actually for all bolts where the I, sorry, the, where the length is going to be 0 0.12 meters. Now I've got permissible um, shearing stress allowed in a bolt, in the bolts. I, I imagine that, that is, so that's each individual bolt so the shear f um, force here is going to be distributed amongst the four bolts. So we're going to divide both sides by four. And that needs to equal a permissible uh, shearing stress. Well this is a force I've worked out here, so I've worked out a shearing force. So let's convert my shearing force using shearing stress. So that will be shear multiplied by the cross-sectional area of a bolt. Okay, so I've got, sh uh, I've got stress times area, and that will give me my shear force. Actually, you can see the I's, the fours on the bottom will cancel, aren't they? So, we're looking for V. Yeah, we're looking for the largest permissible vertical shearing force. Force will cancel. So I need the the shear in the bolt, the diameter of the bolt. I, so I will be the I for the whole structure, well, that's going to be a pain. So we've got that and then divided by Q, big Q, L. What will be what will be a uh, big Q? Well, in that case, um, what will be big Q? We will be looking at that in terms of the top plate. So I'm interested in the the uh, shearing stress here. So 
so the width is irrelevant but I'm interested in this area to get to the top plate so the eyes the pain um, so this is where you look up your eye on a table and the other thing I would need to know is the uh, distance to the centroid of the top plate so I need that distance there uh, to help me find I okay so let's start with the H uh, on the back page Arnold's given us the uh, um, the list of different types of I beams here. So we're looking for which one? Three ten fifty two. So I've got the depth of three hundred and five. So that's from here to here. So depth divided by two equals. one five two point five so that's that distance from there to there so to get to the centroid for the top plate it will be half the height of the top plate which I think is sixteen so plus eight so h equals hundred and sixty point five millimeters and that's also going to be um, the centroid to the int area of interest for Q. So let's work out what I is. So for the main section, I is just lookup table. So we've got looking for I X. I should think, yeah, here. So I X around the axis. So that will be um, 94.9. Um, I'll work in SI units, so times 10 to the minus 6 meters to the power 4. So that's given me the I for the middle bit. Now I want to add on the I for the top and bottom. I'm just going to do it for the top and then double my result. It's nice and symmetric for the bottom. So that is B and D to the power 3 over 12 plus A H squared. Uh, H I know, area straightforward. Um, that's straightforward, that's straightforward. Okay, so <coughs> let's work out what this term is here. I'll work in millimeters and then convert it. Well, I'll work in millimeters and calculate and for convert it when I write it down on the paper. So the width is 200. Depth is 16 to the power 3 divided by 12 plus the area which will be 200 times 16 times by h which is 160.9 squared okay times by 2 and now let's uh, divide by 1 times 10 to the 12 So that's 1.65 times 10 to the minus 4, or 165 times 10 to the minus 6. So we've got 259.9 times 10 to the minus 6 meters to the power 4 for the I. 
so I've got my eye the bolt diamonds have got that the bolt shear stress I've got that Q I don't have Q so that's just a nice square section so B times D times by well I could say um, H but it's uh, strictly speaking it's Y central so that's going to be the same as H so we've got 200 times 16 times 160.5 and that's in millimeters to the power 3 right let's divide that 1 times 10 to the 9 Five, one, three point six times ten to the minus three, and that's in meters to the power of three. Okay, so I've got that value, got that value, got everything now. L is point two. Let's put all the numbers in so you can see them on paper if I put them on a calculator. So <coughs> V equals, first of all, we want the shear stress. So that is 90 times 10 to the 6 pascals. Next I have pi. Then I have the diameter of the bolts. So that is 18 times 10 to the minus 3 to the power 2. Then I have I, which is 259.9 times 10 to the minus 6 and then divided by Q which is 513.6 times 10 to the minus 6 and multiply by the length 0.12 okay so what I've done there is put all the numbers that I found into that equation to find the shear and force. Let's put them in the calculator, see what result we get. 90 times 10 to the 6 times pi times by 18 times minus 10 to the minus 3 and square it times by 259.9 to the minus 6 divided by, open a bracket, 513.6 to the minus 6 times by 0.12 Right, so that gives me 386 kilonewtons. And what's your answer? And that is wrong. Seems to have gone wrong somewhere. Okay, didn't take much. Spotted where I've gone wrong. So what have I done wrong? The answer is three eight six divided by two.
So it's 193 kilonewtons. So in my calculation, can you see where I've gone wrong? I worked out the the shearing that's happening at this direction and of course it's happening on this direction so the Q that I had needed to be times by 2 so we'll call that Q prime okay that was cunning that caught me out so um, it was not only the fact that it's the fact that when you work out the Q here is happening both sides and that's why we needed to double the Q so that's why I went wrong right because we're treating all four sets of bolts damn anyway anyway Good to be wrong sometimes, isn't it? Dull.